So on the 13th of April, we visited Salute, probably the biggest war game show in the UK. The show is held in East London at the Excel Centre. It's a huge venue. Transport links are good with good connections to the underground and admission is £15 for an adult. Right, good morning all. Hope you're all well. I'm um, here today at um, Salute 24 uh, in London at the Excel Centre. Probably, probably the biggest uh, war games uh, con convention um, in in the UK every year. I'm sitting here having me cost Costa getting ready to go in. So I'm here with Alex. Where is he? Oh. Hello, Graham. Hello, Alex. Uh, <laughs> famous for uh, famous for hobby war games channel. Uh, war games hobby. War games hobby got his name wrong. Forgot and, my name. And uh, big uh, influencer for Lion Rampant as well. <laughs> we co we come to this show every year, um, and you know they normally get three, four thousand people here, and it's a it's a great show. Um, honestly, I've, I've looked at the. Uh, the games that are on there's, there's nothing that really grabs me um, that, of my rather narrow bandwidth of interest but um, I am sure once we get in there we'll see some fantastic looking games I, I've got a shopping list but it's not extensive mostly army lists funnily enough um, I'm looking at buying into in the future you know I'll uh, walk around I'll show you the bits and pieces we see and I'll give you my opinion of the show a little bit later one of the other things that goes on here is um, Tomorrow is the London um, Marathon, and so there's a lot of athletes um, here all queuing up to register for the marathon. So Alex and I were actually thinking about registering for the marathon and maybe joining, doing that tomorrow. What do you, what do you think about that, then, Alex? <laughs> I, I mean, we both that. look, we both look the part, don't we? We eh? look the part. Yeah. yeah we... <laughs> all these athletic people. Yeah. Us. There's you and me, two fat blokes. Anyway, no let's see what happens. By the time we arrived, had our coffee and walked in, it was probably about 11, quarter past 11. Um, before you get into the main hall, you have to go through this big queuing area. And if you, you can look how big it was. <clears throat> so through the main door is where you get your freebies. Is this just an empty bag or is it a it's bag of bits? Oh, it's the program. Yeah, but the yeah, but the figures have gone. Uh, ah, sorry? The figures and stuff and the freebies have gone. Have they? Yeah, because we have like 5,000 people have gone in. Yeah. They've all gone, they've already emptied, you've had the lot already? All gone, yeah. What? So how many people you had through the door? You had 6,000 people in here? Wow. Okay. Can't deny, a little bit disappointed, didn't get the figure. Not that I'd use it much for anything, but. Uh, it's nice to have it and I, I guess there's a, a salute dice as well and maybe there was a sprue in there, I don't know, but um, hey ho, it's just one of those things I guess. Here it is, we're in. 6,000 people in here already apparently. Wow. Let's, go this way Let's have a look around, see what we've got. Bike or miniatures. ECW by the look of it. Interesting. Skirmish war games. Oh, that's me. Boxer uprising. No, traditional ICA. Looks good. What club? Well, you are skirmish war games. Skirmish war games. Yeah, skirmish war games. Where, yeah. where are you based then? We're not. We're all around the country. Oh, I see. Yeah, we're sort of uh, peripatetic. A what? Peripatetic. I don't know what that means. Is, well, we move is about. Peripatetic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say this looks great. Thank you. Forty mil, aren't they? Uh, Fifty-four. Fifty-four mil. Yes. Uh, we're in Italy. We're in London. We're in. Derbyshire, we're in. You play every, play everywhere. What's this one here then? Got a little Vietnam game. Twenty-four 
28 mil Vietnam. Very nice indeed. <laughs> are you? Are you? Yeah. Sorry, are you Rubicon models? Are you? Yes. Uh, is this your game? Yeah, this is. Uh, and what? Mike. And what rules do you are you playing? Uh, the, uh, the rules are just called uh, Oscar Mike. So it's, Astra Light. Uh, Oscar and Mike. Oh, it's good. Cool. Here's the rule set they're playing. The, um, Oscar, the Oscar Mike, yeah. Vietnam. Yeah. All right. The, uh, and they're commercially available. These are they? These Oscar Mike rules. Uh, we're uh, having them available for free. Uh, on the Facebook page. Ah. Uh, currently, uh, we've just got the alpha version up. Yeah. Um, but we are uh, uh, closing in on uh, releasing uh, the, the beta version of the rules. Wow. Okay. And they're always going to be free. I'll have a look. Thank you very much. Looks great, by the way. Thank you so much. It does look nice. I always see this guy at uh, Warfare, funnily enough. He's always buying and selling books. Always got lots in. Backers, I know they do a lot of uh, six mil stuff. Ancients. This is uh, a World War II conflict, 47. Actually, I'm slightly wrong. It's, this is Acton Panzer. In that case, Never have enough. T-34. This is Acton Panzer, which has just been released in the last few weeks, I believe. Is that correct? Very good. And this is Warlord Games. I mean, they're a big supplier over here. Conflict 47, Acton Panzer, Bolt Action, Cruel Seas. It's very difficult when you're walking around to tell you how big this show is. It's a right. monster show, it really is. These guys here do the boxes, um, obviously. Very, very useful. Transporting them. Navara, not heard of them before. That's a new brand. Bushido. Again, this is stuff that I don't play, that I am interested, but some of them are. Look at this. It does look spectacular. I have to say, they present them very well as well. You also get um, companies that just sell ball games and models. You know, and, and they always have someone here who's doing a bit of painting, just to lure you in, I suppose. An expert and knows what he's doing. Look at that bad boy there. Very, very nice. But as I say, these are probably a good range of dice and wargaming apparel that you need brushes and glue and wow. Oh you have? This is my observation. The Excel Center is made up of um, the best way to describe it. Units, very, very large, almost aircraft hangar units, and they can open up for as big or as small as you want. Downside is there is no natural light, and because you're in a box, the ambient noise is actually quite high for me. Um, and yeah, sometimes you have to walk out and have a coffee, then, then go back in again. But that's just an observation, really. Lots of people come here and sell board games, you know, role-playing games, that sort of thing. For instance, this here. I have no idea what I'm looking at, but they are very much in demand. Dungeons and Dragons type things. 
Okay, here's another stand of interest. Helion, Helion and Company. Yeah, this this is of my interest, Renate yeah. Glorium. Yeah, um, I was going to. This, this, so this is a this is the core rule set, That's and you're the saying this, yeah. and there's something for Italian Wars. That will be out, I think, in. October, November, the, oh, the so, army lists. And that's what, 15, 1600? Yeah. So is this a sort of a French I Italian wars? Yes, yeah, yeah. When, when the French invaded and failed? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting period. Okay, I'll look out for that. And this is a Mort It Glorium. Uh, so this is with the counters and you. All right. There's a demo game of it over there. Of, yeah, okay. of that, yeah. Of, of Mort? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Like Brilliant, thank you very much. And again, this is the, the other side of Warlord Games, the other side. And they are doing a terrific trade here. Absolutely terrific. This is interesting. Excuse me. So they're having a, a speed painting competition. So it's a speed painting competition, is it? 45 uh, speed minutes? Is 45 minutes, not like true speed painting. It's enough time for people to try the paint out as well. So. Oh, okay. So what, what paints are you uh, you showing? Are these it's your the, own brand? Or? No, it's the two thin coats, same as Duncan's. Two thin coats? Yeah, Duncan Rhodes, two thin coats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know this brand, actually. I, I mean, you know Army Paint and Vallejo. And, oh, right, okay. But, but these, okay. this is uh, interesting. Yeah, so um, basically they we tried to call a match to Games Workshop's paints. Um, yeah. And basically, we benefit from the hindsight of experience. Um, so, um, the higher pigments, and um, we've got better acrylic tech in ours, um, so they will behave a lot better, they'll thin down. What do you recommend as an undercoat, depending on the colour, I assume? Um, generally grey, like all, all mints yeah, yeah, in yeah. the cabinet are prime grey. Prime um, grey. Yeah, 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 because uh, it just it's the right balance between being able to see the detail, um, we're all being white, white's very yeah. forgiving. As rough brown better. white or rough brown grey they use, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It seems to be that's different. what they use. I use, we use the Colour Forge sprays. Colour Forge? Um, yeah, Colour Forge, because um, they behave more consistently, like they all work really well. Okay. Um, rather than clogging detail and stuff, um, you know, because it's a bit hit and miss with cats sometimes. Whereas Colour Forge we have never had any problems with. And they do a standard grey, which is what this colour is. Um, where is he? Let me find him. Where's your hand? Oh, there we there go. Is. This is your standard undercoat. That's quite. It's a... not our undercoat. It's Colour Forges. Um, Colour Forge. A company called Colour Forge. See, that's quite a dark grey, isn't it? Normally. Um, I personally I call it a medium grey, but yeah, it's on the. If I, yeah, I could see how you call it dark as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got it's it. True, but they can be broken. Yeah. So. But this um, is interesting. Okay, the, not heard of you. Great stuff. Okay. And I think this. I think this is a good idea having a paint competition. Getting people hands-on. That's it, to try the paints and... It's, it's a really good idea, I, yeah. I like it, I like it. So this is a nice... Men who will be kings. What what period is it? So these are Sudan? This is um, Algerian Desert, Foreign Legion, well, this the, is the... the in there somewhere. Where's the rest of them? They're in the two forts, are they? Well, we just finished one game. So this is the relief column over here, coming yeah. out of the village. Oh, yeah. Going to relieve the fort. Yeah. The Arabs have regrouped after attacking the fort. And they're going to come on and try and sandwich the foreign legion between the two. It looks great. It looks really, really nice. Good, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. The games every hour on the hour, the chance of winning a rule book free. If you a rule book? Yeah. So this is a, a Mad Max style game. How long do your games last in general? Uh, normally about 30, 40 minutes. 30, 40 minutes. Perfect. Yeah, do like Mad. Where's Mel Gibson? <laughs> It looks great, I love it. Nice and simple. Sometimes the most simple games are the most effective, I think. Yeah. It does look great. This is mildly interesting. So, Conquerors and Kings, rules for ancient battles. 15 mil. Uh, Phalangites versus Greeks, by the look of it. Greeks and Macedonians, oh my. My eyes aren't so good. Um, I've not heard of these rules before. These. May I, may, I just, may I just hold that a moment? So, uh, 
Oh, did you create these rules, or? Yeah, they're our own. So yeah. these, are, these are your yeah, own? Three lines of troops. Okay, cool. Play well? How long does the game last? Two and a half hours, and this is, is this a bigger than normal table that you would have? Okay, so it's two foot by four foot. Two foot by five foot? Three by five, my eyes are... Yeah, yeah, being close does help. A bit like to the strongest, isn't it? There's grids as well. That's the that's the competition, is it? <laughs> Looks great though. Thank you. World War Two game, 15 mil. Poor old, poor old Dakota. Looks like he's he's in trouble, isn't he? He's going down. What a great model though. Absolutely fantastic model. Rapid fire. These are quite a popular set of rules I've seen people play. Um, our troopers have dropped in there. Does look good though, doesn't it? There's a little game from uh, Crawley War Games Club. Uh, first player type game, uh, Dark East Africa. It's good fun, doesn't it? I love these. And another sort of rock up and play game. And it's great when you get the kids playing as well, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Um, the car racing game. And look at this. Uh, World War One game. Trenches. Great hat this guy's got, isn't it? I love it when the guys who are running the games are so enthusiastic. These guys are fantastic. Really nice. These guys do a fantastic trade. I've got two of them. That's Deep Cut Studio. And they're, I think they're, they, they come over from Europe and they've, they've got these little things here, but they are always, look, I mean, you look at the crowd of people around here. They're always doing an absolutely great trade. Really are. And it's a, oh, look at that. Excuse me. I quite like that. I don't know why, but I find that quite appealing. I don't know what I could use it for, but I'd like to buy one. <laughs> Very good indeed. Peri miniatures, peri, -miniatures, peri plastics. I mean, look at the stuff they brought here. And they, they're doing great trade. Always a massive range of plastic and metal figures. I do like them. Anything there I like in particular? A lot of Napoleonics, they... these out. Agincourt footnotes. Now 1415, 1429. I wonder if I could use them for my Italians. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. From my point of view, these are reasonably generic. Yes, very nice indeed. I'm hugely tempted with those. I'm not quite sure what I would do with them, but I am hugely tempted. I mean, they obviously do bases. Everybody knows their bases, but uh, they do some great. They do some great buildings as well. Look. And again, you can see how popular they are. Really, really popular. More of the Renetta. Yeah. Okay, so this interests me a lot. Um, 
So the company is uh, flagdo.com and this flag here is for Florence. Italian Wars. I kind of think I'm going to buy that, you know. What do you think? So I've done about a, thir about a third of it, and as you can see, there is a lot here, um, and a lot to digest, really. So uh, I'm just stopping, having a little bit of grub. See what Alex thinks, and then we'll move on. The fact that you all were just here for an hour, when you could have been buying stuff or could have been playing a game, the fact that you were here is quite impressive. I really appreciate so it. So here they have I uh, just people being interviewed. And a of everybody? As you can see, Would that be cool? So I'm going to do like a kind of selfie thing. Ready? All right. Very impressive. And the people who have been on, who are they? Uh, I do not know. They are a history of the gaming. There must have been seating for over 100 people on that centre area but there were side rooms off the main hall as well and again they were holding uh, meetings or demonstrations so there's loads going on here that you don't realize that's going on right so it's Leeds War Games Club they come away haven't they and they're doing Jutland 1916 and this is what you call on Big old battle, isn't it? I mean, we always say, you know, sometimes with with warships they need a big a big table to play on. Well, here it is. You're not going to get any bigger, are you? So this is um, a guy called Yorkshire Gamer, and this is his game. He's uh, one of the regulars on the Plastic Crack podcast. As his, again, another celebrity. It's him again. He's always on my channel. I don't know why. I think we must walk on the same yeah, path. Subbing, sub. Yeah. We need to get into a thousand. How many uh, left? Oh, you're nearly there. Nearly there. Nearly there. But yeah, a big this is great, isn't it? <laughs> loads of um, loads of merch here. Look. Oh, I'll take a salute dice. So if you buy one of those, you get the free These are nice, aren't they? We've only got, we've got any... Wow! Look, I just, I just, I better pan out a little bit because it's that big. <laughs> So, so, what, so what, what have we got here? Okay, so this is uh, uh, the town of Gradara. It's a walled town in Italy. Um, the model was done by uh, Oshiro Model Terrain, um, and it's been sponsored by the, the government of Gradara, so like the city government. Um, really? Yes, that's right. And wow. Can, there's a fellow over here with the, all this information about the city and its heritage. Um, and so can, what, what period is this? Is so this, the events of today's, uh, these games are from the Siege of Gradara, which is in 1446. Now this is, this is so hot for me because I'm interested in the Italian wars. Is this French and um, the Italians or is this? This is, a, this is a local dispute is my understanding. Between two city-states? Yeah, I think so. Um, so. So what are the city-states again? Oh, pass. Um, you could ask uh, uh, the folks from uh, Master Stroke Games over here. They're the ones actually running the games. They're... Uh, it's their game, Force of Virtue, which is a, you know, Italian Wars Renaissance era skirmish game. Wow. Um, so, these, so are, these are 28 mil figures or are these a bit bigger? These are, so these, these are figures for the game, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. and you'd have to ask them where they come from. And then these are tracking the progress of the, of the campaign, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it has a, a system that, that, you know, sort of by how these games are going, I guess it, affects the overall conduct of the siege. But uh, they can definitely tell you more about the game. Um, so, so what's actually happening right now in the game then? Um, we're, is, we're between... Uh, turns. Well, we're between uh, games, I think. But, um, so over here, we've got some attackers who are you know, bombarding the wall. Over there, we've got an attempted escalate. Um, and there's another one around here somewhere too. So they're all little skirmishes that are like incidents within the overall siege. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. I shall keep walking. It looks great. Isn't that spooky? This is, it is so on topic for me. Look at this. May I just squeeze through? And they're, here they're trying to uh, climb the walls, look. What an amazing model. Do you, what that gentleman was just saying earlier. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So, so what, what are the rule set you're actually using, specifically? Uh, yeah, it's force of Virtue. Force of Virtue? Force of Virtue, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and uh, how long does the game take? 
Or are you game, playing mini games? Uh, we're doing games here. Each game should take about between 30 minutes to 35. And okay, so if, small. So, so as if you turn up as a player, would you just be this, th these round here, or would you help control everything? So, in this specific uh, one, we have uh, like this is one force here. This is the besieging force. It's a skirmish game. Yeah, yeah. So based around uh, couples, officers. So say defender. It's all based around cards. So we use. It's, car it's a card-driven game. Card-driven game. So, for example, these are our siege cards, and these have all the elements of the siege that uh, provide you the rules for all the elements of the siege that you have. So, for example, ladders. So, so the force of, force of virtue. They're not just siege games. They are standalone yes. games you can play on tabletop. Exactly. So, how many figures would you play on a side if you played a normal club night game? Club night game would be between uh, one and fifteen figures a side. One of fifteen, so it's very small scale. Yeah, one of fifteen. Yes. So it's uh, base game is set in Rome in 1492 with the election of the first Borgia Pope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, around the gang fighting and low-level skirmishing between different uh, groups in the city in the city of Rome, and this expansion is doing the siege of Gradara and focusing on the escalades, the sallies out into the siege camp to destroy things like a cannon. Can I touch that? Oh yes, absolutely. So these are the, the Malatesta defenders uh, trying to keep the, uh, the town uh, in their control versus uh, Federico Montefeltro, one of the um, most uh, infamous uh, condottieri of the Renaissance, trying to take it for his family. Brilliant. Listen, it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, Adeptus Titanicus. I mean, these, these figures are... I mean, look at the size of the guy there. Trust me, that guy's six foot tall. He's, he's not three foot tall. Look at the look at the, like the Titan Owners Club, the Traitors. So I assume that's the name of the title of the game they're playing here. But look at that. Amazing. These are a set of rules I've heard a lot about. Burrows and badges. And uh, you see the guys on the plastic cracker. They're always painting these figures up. Podcast and um, all very individual looking. May I touch? Look at him. Isn't he great? Great moulding. Great moulding. Sorry? See the bear? Okay. Where's the bear? Apparently there's a bear I've got to see. May I touch? <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Super, what a great moulding. Great mould, great paint job as well. Mind you, when you've got a moulding like that, it does make it a lot easier to paint, doesn't it? Painting all of these, uh, particularly like the most, the more recent sculpts. Um, so there's the pipe badger over there. They are so defined and so well sculpted. Yeah. Painting them is a, is a dream. A friend, a friend of mine's painted a lot of them. They, they, do, they do come out remarkably yeah. well. And then when they arrive, it's next to no cleanup on the prize. Yeah. Screw them straight on, spray them. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Foundry, and they are selling these to the strongest. And they're selling these to the strongest. These are just out. Celtic Fringe, a set of rules, 1638, 1652, Scottish and Ireland. And also, this is of more interest, scenarios in Scotland. Could I use these? Could I use these for Lions Rampant? Mm, I am seriously tempted, seriously tempted with that. Maybe not to play those rules, although I know some of the guys at uh, Farm Recover are playing that. Could I use them for Lions Rampant just to give me some more scenarios to play? Interesting. Now here's a trade I like, offensive miniatures. Um, and I've, I think I've got some of the, uh, they're Napoleonics. Uh, 28 mil Napoleonics and they are really nice. Very nice indeed. The only thing is, I wish I could paint that well. Always makes me feel quite insufficient, I suppose. <laughs> oh, right, okay. But yeah, great stuff. Again, more, look, just chuck the sprues down and let the kids go. Glue and paint. This is so clever. 
this is so clever. Get everybody involved, look. Everybody involved. I love that. Ooh, Hellboys. Dead Man's Hand. Interesting. I was playing this uh, just last last Wednesday at the club. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. With the new set of rules? No, I haven't got the new set of rules, no. Do you sell the new set of rules on their own, standalone? They are just on that rack there, on the very top shelf. Um, yeah, it's the Redux. Redux. Um, so basically, it's, I'll take you played the original, obviously, if you play it on Wednesday. <laughs> so, so Redux and the... Uh, tell me the difference then, fundamental difference. So basically, uh, one of the big changes... Sorry, I oh, that's fine, no worries. Um, one of the big fundamental changes is the fact that uh, mounted combat is now a thing. Yes. Um, in, in the first edition, there wasn't as much of it. There, there was a reference to it, but that was about it. Wasn't there? Exactly. Um, so it's, it's an action to get on top of the horse. Um, if you're shot, you take falling damage because you get shot off the horse. Um, there's obviously negative modifiers when you're shooting from a horse. Um, some of the cards have had slight tweaks to them, um, and even the, the gangs to a certain point. Um, some of the gun stingers, are, uh, you know, you get an option of two instead of the one. Um, so one could be better in melee, one could be better in uh, like a oh, shooting like scenario. Like a little bit more uh, personalised then. Basically. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to show you the book as well. Um, in the original there was uh, like campaign modes and scenarios. Yeah, yeah we were, I was playing, I played the last one. What they've done is they turned it into a broadsheet. Um, so one thing that's, that's absolutely beautiful is the fact that you can see, it's almost like you're in the time and space. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you've got three scenarios uh, which you can play across. Uh, and move on to the next one. Yeah. So, um, for, yes, what they had before, they were chapters before, weren't they? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And they named them after, obviously, the, the films, the good, the bad, the ugly, yeah, etc. Yeah. So, how many different stories with uh, three chapters are there in the new book? That's a very good question. Off the top of my head, I'll be honest with you. I'm from this corner because I can see one, two, three, four, five, five there. Yeah. But you've also got the opportunity to run campaigns as well. Um, I don't know if you ever did in the original, but if someone's like eliminated, for instance, yeah. um, you can uh, flip a card at the end, and they could like have their leg blown off, for instance. So they're hobbling for the rest of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Um, so another issue. Uh, sorry, not another issue. Another thing that's worth mentioning is if I show you in here, it, there's actually they've done stuff with livestock in town folk. Um, so if you have like a, a, a lot of cow or horses, something like that. You can actually get someone to shoot, and they'll cause a stampede. I think it's the kind of way um, so, that, like, for instance, if you're playing on this map, they can come storming through the town until they leave it. Yeah. Um, and they, so anything they hit is going to hurt. I mean, I know um, that one of the cards is uh, used to an ability where you can pull a civilian and use it as a yes, a body yeah, that's for the, uh, the banditos. Well, no, no. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Use it to hide. But um, but yes. Um, yeah, they've tried to cover quite a multitude of sins. Um, so have they slickened up any of the rules at all? The way it's presented or, uh, I mean, a lot or is it still the same? The fundamental rules are still there. Um, so, you know, like, say if you're aiming in shots, etc. If someone's got a rifle and they aim twice now, yeah. they get a plus three to their aim rather than a plus two. Uh, so, it, you know, so if you've got like a gunslinger, for instance, with a rifle, you're potentially looking at a plus five on a shot. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, let's be honest, that's a, that could be a make or break situation, a bit like with the shotguns. Uh, which obviously on a single shot you get a plus four. Uh, if you're emptying both barrels, that's a plus six. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of the rules have fundamentally stayed the same. Um, and there's been more tweaks to the original. Um, you know, making it a lot more kind of accessible with things that, like, like we were saying before, with the, the horses and being mounted. Um, it was something that never really got used in the game. Okay, final well, question then. The yes. How much is the book? Just the rules, just as it's standalone. Uh, standalone, the book is twenty five pounds. Twenty five. Um, okay, if you want so the starter set, which is basically everything you see here, oh, yeah, apart from the dice tower at the back, uh, and obviously the board itself, the physical board. Yeah. Uh, so all the plastic terrain, all of the boards, the models, the tokens, etc., um, and the cards which come in, in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is what the, the nice thing is they've actually put. If I can get that out. Do, do I need to change the cards or can I use my existing cards? Uh, existing cards you can roughly use, but some of them have been tweaked. So things like um, you can't kill, you can't catch, um, that has now gone to uh, a free move. And so again, you can't what? You can't kill what you can't catch. So it's one of the catch. It's one of the cards on here. Oh, okay. Um, and it basically, it gives you the free movement. Um, and it, uh, there's one that would you recommend okay, you buy so the cards at the same time as the... I would say so, only for the fact that 
yeah, there are going to be some uh, there's some rules that have changed on cards that you've not seen before. Um, and how much are the cards then? Um, I th I'd have to double check. I, I, they might come with the uh, rule book. Uh, but I would double check with the designers for that, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, I, 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 if they are so certainly, I can't imagine they'd be much at all. Brilliant. Listen, thank you very much for your time. No worries. A pleasure to meet you. Confirm, I, I did buy the rule book. It was £25 and it did come with a pack of cards included with it. Okay, so I'm, I'm starting to tire a little bit now. Um, there's, there is so much here. Gringo's 40, they do some fantastic miniatures. Uh, they're not all 40 mil, they're all 25 mil, but look at these bad boys. Amazing. Oh, this is a little unusual. We're just showing the cards. These are cards. Uh, you call them slides, don't you? You call them slides, don't you? Is that right? Is that the term for them? No, we call them paper boys themselves. Paper? Paper boys. Paper boys? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's good. I mean, this is a way of getting the game on the table. That would take me three years to paint these. Can I touch them? May I pick one up? Here's a quick way of getting bits and pieces on the table. Anyway, my cannon's firing at you. Doesn't it look great? Doesn't it look great? Peter's paper balls. Longton Strike Force. You can see some sort of Vietnam y type thing, I think. I guess. Look at the modelling on this. Doesn't that look fantastic? So impressive. Now, who doesn't like a Viking game? What a Viking it's called. And I believe they are, this is uh, London. 10 14. Very much uh, noisy. Hard driven game. It's automatic. It's automatic. Yeah, only when you get on land you need to roll. So I'm on the ship. It's full length of that fight with the ship. Okay, so we have any more chairs? Do we have any queens? Great stuff. As always, for these participation games, it's so important that someone who's enthusiastic and loud and leading. Great job done. Seaboard action. Never mind the billocks. I believe they're using the rule set. Good she. But look at the boats. I've actually got a pan out on this one. Amazing. Wow. Great fun. Yeah, this is like 1500s, 1550s, uh, a lot of French and English here, and apparently down the far end there, some pirates or freeloaders or opportunists are attacking. Look at this. Amazing. These guys putting on this game here come all the way from Cornwall to put it on. Magnificent effort. Okay, uh, area called the Lard Zone. Very much uh, reference to the two fat lardies and their game. So, what do we have here? World War II. What a tanker! A reinforcement tank has appeared, oh, no. like a Pokémon. Oh, no. All right. Look at that. Oh, no, another one. one. <laughs> Back into the ruins for me. Oh, you can start here. Some 
Okay. Right, uh, everyone, roll. No, 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 not yet. Wait. I'm just testing you. Oh, we've got some reenactors here. Weapons. Pikes and... And here's some chaps, they're having lessons on how to use a pike. Okay, and this is the Society of Ancients. Uh, Richard, I know him from very old. How are you doing? I do, Graham. Uh, they support. So how would you... Uh, we promote ancient and medieval history and war gaming. And what rule, what rule set do you favour? We are completely rules neutral. So you play we Saga? Do you like Saga? I'm, I'm quite happy to promote Saga. <laughs> I won't play it myself. But. No, no. And, you, and you've got lots of uh, magazines? We, you have a monthly magazine, a journal? Bi-monthly, every two months. Slingshot? Slingshot is our okay. journal. Members can subscribe for six issues. Uh, it comes every two months. We are on issue 350. Yeah, I seem to remember. So, I've, uh, we I've have been going since September 1966. September 1966. Okay, so 28 mil ancients. Yes. Impetus. Yeah. The, the rule set is impetus. Are you a club or a society? No, we're just a group of three guys. <laughs> group of four guys. Hastings. <laughs> oh, you're Hastings based. Yep. So, do your four guys have an, a gang name? No at all. Well, you need a gang my name. My brother, yeah. Eric and Mark, that's it. <laughs> you need a gang name. <laughs> and we're, then, we're, we're the Society of Ancients Red Arrows. We're the display team. The display team. I love that. Battle of Fapalus. <laughs> <Battle of, laughs> <Battle of, laughs> it looks great. Yeah. So we've got about 12 historic battles that we've represented in the game. Like Radicus, Gagamela, Thapsus, um, Gaza, Paratacane, um, Elipa, um, the list goes on. And we've got more coming down the track. Looks really, really nice. Well, these, these guys, my brother and Eric, have painted for 30 years. If they haven't got 100,000 figures between them, I'd be surprised. Wow. You need a gang name. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, uh, I'll think of one for you. It's <laughs> most shows, and we play games. Do you go, do you go to Warfare? Yeah. You'll be at Warfare. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look out for you. So. Um, this is the Society of Ancients. Uh, they call themselves the Red Arrows as of, as of a minute ago. Are you the wingman or are you the one in the front? No, I'm the wingman. The one in the front over there. <laughs> so at Warlord Games, they've just released a new set, or going to release a new set in June. Epic scale, so it's 13 mil-ish. Uh, resin, blocks of figures, and it's for the uh, Punic Wars. So it'd be um, Carthage versus the Romans. And I'm really, really quite keen on this. Um, it could be a quick way of playing it. Um, it might be a way in also to play Hail Caesar on a slightly smaller scale, but very, very doable. But if you look at the mouldings, they're incredible. And these are the Carthaginians, I believe. And they've been in two, two ranks and the elephants as well. Yeah, it, I think I could be spending or going this way. And here's a couple of books I saw and I'm, really tempted with these as well well i've had an, an evening and a night to reflect on the on the show and um i didn't know quite what to expect yep a little bit disappointed i didn't get the uh the gift bag as i walked in but it wasn't the end of the world at the end of the day i think obviously there was the pirate figure a dice there was a dice tray from deep cut as well but um it doesn't matter um the venue's great as always easy to get to um, fifteen pound, I think, is good value for a, for an all day show. Six thousand people there, so I believe that's up a couple of thousand. And looking around, there were some gaps around the walls, and I'm fairly certain I've seen more traders there. Um, so I don't know; I might be wrong on that, but it felt a, a little bit emptier. Um, the demonstration games were superb. As I said, I, I looked at the list of them, and it, they didn't hugely appeal. But when I saw them, I think. Wow, some of them were fantastic. In particular, the Italian city. I, I love that one. Absolutely love that one. Um, so, yeah, would I recommend um, uh, a salute to visit it? Yeah, 100%. Well worth a visit.
Um, I hope you found my review. Obviously, it's, it's my own personal view. Um, take it as it is. I appreciate also um, with the camera, I've, I've probably led a little bit by things I like and, you know, some of the fantasy stuff I probably didn't look at as much. So apologies about that. But um, the camera goes where, <laughs> where I'm interested in, really. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway, thanks for viewing. I ho hope it was helpful. And, um, yeah, if you like what you saw, please share it with other people and like, subscribe and all that other good stuff. And uh, take care.